Welcome, I'm Dr. Janine Bowery, naturopathic doctor, and today I'm talking about vitamin A and some of the most common causes of deficiency of vitamin A. I'll also compare up beta carotene versus retinol and some of those important differences in the different types of vitamin A that you may be getting from your diet. So when we talk about the most common causes of deficiency, believe it or not, if you're taking a lot of vitamin D as a supplement, you can actually run a little bit lower in your vitamin A. So it has been estimated that taking over 2,000 units of vitamin D per day can actually run you at the risk of developing a vitamin A deficiency. So ensuring that you're getting enough vitamin A from your food sources is very important. Also, if you overconsume fiber, so most times this would not be necessarily from the diet, but from a lot of fiber supplements, this could, again, be binding up your vitamin A and can cause that deficiency. Also, if you're overdoing it with protein powders. So, you know, beyond the normal serving or two of protein powder per day, if you're having a lot more than that, this can also run you the risk of having and developing a vitamin A deficiency. Also, if you consume a lot of the polyunsaturated fats, this is something that I often talk about in a lot of my videos. So whether that's the corn oil, the safflower oil, so the seed oils, as well as the genetically modified oils like the canola oil, oil, which is probably the most consumed inflammatory fat in people's diets that you really want to make sure that you are not consuming these because not only are they very inflammatory, but because they are genetically modified and highly refined, this can really have an impact on your vitamin A status. Also, if you take a lot of beta carotene supplements, so there's other issues with taking beta carotene in terms of a supplementation, which I'll talk about in another video. But yeah, if you take too much of the synthetic beta carotene because you're wanting to improve your vitamin A status and your antioxidant status, this can actually make your vitamin A status lower than what it would be if you weren't taking that beta carotene supplement. Also, if you are using certain medications, so corticosteroids like cortisone would be one factor that can lower your vitamin A, as well as laxatives, antibiotics, and some of the statin drugs. So these are known to lower cholesterol levels, but can also lower your vitamin A, which is a fat-soluble vitamin, as well as overconsumption of alcohol. And this is the one that's the most important to really note. So again, in moderation, alcohol is okay, but if you're overdoing it, this can really deplete your vitamin A. So now I'll talk a little bit about the difference between beta carotene and retinol. So retinol is the preformed vitamin A that is found in animal products. And this is something that because it is preformed, it has a high absorption rate. It is a fat soluble vitamin and it is stored in the liver and in our fatty tissues. And for this reason, you know, you have to be a little bit careful if you are taking a retinol supplement because it is stored in our body tissues that it can be and become quite toxic in high dosages. Because it is stored in the body for a long time, we have that utilization. So this is why when I talk in another video about the food sources of our retinol, our preformed vitamin A, if you have those food sources that are very high, like liver, beef liver, lamb liver, just you know once a week, once every two weeks, then you're probably okay for your vitamin A status for a period of time because again, it is stored in our liver and in our body. So retinol is really important because it is required for the production of rhodopsin in our eyes. So this is important for our light sensitivity in our eyes as it's tied into our melanopsin as well. And it, of course, those relationships with circadian rhythms, which I've discussed in other videos. So make sure you check those out. Now, beta carotene is very different from retinol in the fact that it is something that is a precursor to the retinol or the vitamin A. And and it is converted into that vitamin A in the intestinal mucous membrane. So proper digestion and proper health of our intestinal flora is really important for that proper conversion of beta carotene into retinol. But here's the thing. So for the vegetarians who only get their beta carotene as their vitamin A source, you need 12 beta carotenes to make just one retinol. So this is why often vegetarians or people that are not getting it from the food 
sources that are non-vegetarian could be running the risk of that vitamin A deficiency because of that conversion. Also, that carotenoid conversion is not the best for a lot of people. So again, from a genetic standpoint, Northern Europeans, such as myself, can run the risk because of your genetic makeup to not have that great conversion of that beta carotene into that retinol. So this is why often it's recommended that the further away that you live from the equator and in those northern, if your genetics are from those northern regions, that you're actually getting more of that retinol that preformed from the animal products of your vitamin A from, you know, the animal sources in your diet. So another thing that's interesting is that the beta carotene, because it's water soluble, is not stored in the body. So again, very different from the retinol and that preformed form of vitamin A. And beta carotene is known as an antioxidant. So whereas retinol was known as something that's important for the opsins in the eye, the beta carotene is known more for its benefits as an important antioxidant in the body. So there you have it. There's a lot of information for you. You know, I hope that you learned something new. I would love to hear from you. So please do put your questions and your comments below. If you're taking a vitamin A or a beta carotene supplement, I'd love to hear from you as well. Also be sure to share this video with someone that you know will benefit from this information and give me a big thumbs up. I truly appreciate all of that great feedback that you share with me. Also, if you're new to my channel, welcome in. I hope that you'll subscribe and click that bell to turn on all notifications so you always get my newest and latest uploads. And remember to always take good care of your health and do it naturally. Thanks for watching today.